all sounds can be measured as functions of air pressure over time, which is the mathematical basis for how we hear music and sound in general. What's made music great for centuries is the fact that we can use instruments to play different notes, which can then lead to different melodies and chords. Melodies are most often different notes, or more specifically, different frequency waves played at different times. Chords are different notes, different frequency waves played at the same time, like the C chord. But hold on a second. This graph looks different than the ones we just saw for the three note melody. That's because it's the sum of three sine waves with three different frequencies. Check this out. The song you listened to most recently on a service like SoundCloud, <clears throat> go follow Trap Lord, link in the description, sounds good because it's just like a chord, a song is a sum of different sinusoidal waves that our ears can parse out. The graph for a full song would obviously look more complex than the one for the chord, but it's the same idea. Sine waves, like the one I just used to demonstrate melodies and chords, have another musical significance as well. They are one of the key building blocks of modern synthesizers known as oscillators. We can see that just by adding two sine waves at frequencies that correspond to notes C4 and C5, we can hear a sound closely resembling the tuning note that Mr. Dasco gives the LM band or wind ensemble before they play to warm up. And on that note, hardy har har, three of the other basic oscillators for synthesizers are triangle waves, sawtooth waves, and square waves. With these four sinusoidal waves, musicians have been able to create thousands of synths that not only model the instrument sounds we know, but also introduce new ones. These four oscillating shapes can be placed on top of each other through addition, and multiplication. This, combined with the fact that the frequency and amplitude of each oscillator can be changed, means that the possibilities of sound creation are truly infinite. So, what can we do when we've made a sound we like using our oscillators? Well, to answer that question, we need to explore another concept about truly captivating music. Dynamics. Dynamics may seem overplayed, hardy har har, if you only think of it as getting softer or louder. But this surface level understanding of dynamics doesn't do it justice. How fast you get to a certain volume, how long you stay at a certain volume, and the value of the volume at any given time is what allows musicians to make music that, along with pitch and rhythm, engages us and allows us to tangibly connect to music through our ears. The attack, decay, sustain, and release, aka ADSR or ADSR envelope, allows synth users to manipulate the volume of sound from their oscillators over time. And in this case, by time, I mean usually just a handful of seconds. Many modern synthesizer sounds are manipulated based on the time it takes for a sound to reach the max volume, attack, the time it takes for a sound wave to reach the sustain volume, decay, the sustain volume itself, which is the volume of your sound as long as you're still holding down a note on your keyboard, and the time it takes for a sound wave to reach complete silence after you stop holding down a note, release. To represent our ADSR, we can clearly see that we'll need to figure out how to make the amplitude of our sound waves increase and decrease over time. We know these two manipulations of sound as crescendos and decrescendos. An easy way to model an ADSR is to multiply each oscillating equation by a variable for time, vertically stretch each oscillating equation, and horizontally shift each oscillating equation. Here are the results.
Now, here is a very slowed down example of ADSR using the same method with adjustments to the numbers. The filter is also an important foundational tool that allows us to cut unwanted frequencies out of our sound. I think I'll save that math for another video though. Although there are many other audio manipulation tools that can be used by turning knobs and sliding sliders, the last one that is worth mentioning when talking about the basics of synthesizers is the low frequency oscillator, aka the LFO. This can be linked to things such as the amplitude and the frequency of a sound wave in order to add sound wave modulation over time. An LFO can give off this type of effect when linked to the amplitude of a sound wave and this type of effect when linked to the frequency of a sound wave. The oscillating effects that LFOs give to your synth can also be sped up or slowed down, thus providing flexibility for even more unique sounds. Thanks for watching, and after all that jazz, I'll close out with this jazz. Here's an electronic rendition of the melody from My One and Only Love by John Coltrane.